Chris, I am absolutely delighted to be able to interview you. I think the whole idea of this anniversary for 50 years is really phenomenal. You and I are the kids on the block. Um, after talking to some of the folks that are around for a long time, um, their thrill and their desire to help out an ESGR is just phenomenal. And we come in, we're the new kids on the block. And I think that our spirit and our ability to understand certain things um, along with what we want, what we believe this organization should do really adds to that. So I'm really pleased that I get a chance to um, interview you. you you're, a, you're a fast mover, you're doing some wonderful things and it's very exciting to follow you. And so my first question to you is, what brought you to ESGR and how long have you been a volunteer and why are you in this crazy organization that really, <laughs> you know, the whole idea, when Larry was in the military, there was no such thing as ESGR at that in the beginning part. And it is so needed. So why are you here, you wonderful person? <laughs> well, it, it, it's definitely um, a, a story of luck. I was brought into the organization by uh, Colonel Joe Biscacci who he and I were actually in another organization together and we had just started a great friendship and a working relationship. And he mentioned he was with the ESGR and I had never heard about that. So he started telling me what the mission of the ESGR was. And I just leaned over and went, you and I need to talk. And he kind of smiled and he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, I, I need, to work with you. I need to find out more about this. This is exactly the kind of group I've been looking for. So I'm the daughter of uh, a naval aviator. My dad was an attack pilot. And so he flew in Vietnam and he spent a number of years after his Navy um, active duty. He spent a number of years working in the aerospace industry. Mm -hmm. so my father actually sold the F-16. But as he was working, he's working for a big company, he continued to do his reserve duty. So for about 26 years, dad was in the reserves. Was and he so, still flying then? Uh, initially he was, and, and then he wasn't, he, he missed it. He, he got into that executive uh, <laughs> style where they don't exactly fit into their uniforms anymore. <laughs> but for years, you know, he was going in what we called going to play Navy two weeks, going to go do his, you know, time. And then every couple, I guess it was four years, he would do his carrier landings. And that was always tense because he had to make sure he had gotten down to his weight. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, you know, those, those trying times. But, um, you know, my family, our service to our country was a big part of what our family did, what we liked to do, what we support and the people that were around us. Mm -hmm. And back in 2008, my father actually passed away. He had soft tissue sarcoma. Mm. And, you know, more than likely, it was probably some charming exposures and things that he got during his Navy time. But the reality was I wanted to do something to honor my dad. And I thought, hey, what's, what's better than serving his, you know, peers, the families and the other folks that were around for us when we needed it? Absolutely. So I, I fell into this organization and really, you know, when you start meeting people like Colonel Biscacci, who is a dynamo and just so impressive to meet, and then you find out, oh, wait, there's this organization that's helping employers and the guards and, and reservists and, and their families. This is an organization I need to take part of. So I, I've kind of been caregiving for the last 20 years. And finally I had an opportunity to kind of give back. And I've always been part of, you know, the children's school stuff, mm -hmm. PTA, but this was a way to really impact the, the very people that I felt supported my family when we needed it. How long have you been in ESGR? Only about three years now. It seems kind of funny. Actually, I think it's four. It's four. It it, you know, <laughs> COVID timing is so charming. But um, it has been such a blessing. And I have to say, I've always been involved in a variety of activities and, you know, different groups of people. 
But this organization has had some of the most amazing people that are a part of this group and doing dynamic things. It has been such an amazing organization to be a part of. Please tell us what you do for ESGR. What's your role or roles in this? Well, my main role, at least as of right now, is, is certainly volunteer. I'm a volunteer like every other member of the ESGR. And so I get to give of my time as I have it. And fortunately here, especially in California, we have such a great uh, executive leadership team mm -hmm. that are always encouraging saying, hey, if there's something you see that you think would be useful, let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's try some new things. And so I've, I've really gotten to you know, bring some of my business background and mm -hmm. my social skills here into this organization. So it's been like phenomenal, but and are you the area chair in your area? I am area six chair. So that's from Camp Pendleton down to the border. Mm -hmm. And that's for a brief period of time, I was actually working as a event plus coordinator. We have some amazing volunteer service technicians, the mm -hmm. SPs, that you know, really are our administrators extraordinaire, but I was helping them because they needed a little extra support because what we demand of them is crazy. <laughs> it's, it's being the mentor and helping people throughout whatever they're trying to do. Um, and, and as young folk in ESGR, we can actually mentor because we have the, the experience from whatever our careers and professions. And certainly you watched your dad and experienced all of the things that he did. That, that's really interesting. Now, in your four short years in being with ESGR, can you think of three of favorite moments in your, your experience with California ESGR? Absolutely no problem. The first one was the first Patriot Award ceremony that I attended. I got to go at, with Colonel Biscacci and actually Ruben uh, wound up joining me who is my uh, area vice chair mm -hmm. and Ruben Camacho. And we went to a US post office um, group in Encinitas. And uh, the, the gentleman who had actually um, put his employer up for an award, who nominated, mm -hmm. uh, had been gone for, an, for a significant period of time. And actually, uh, his supervisor had actually changed and, and oh, really? gone. But the group was so supportive, and they had gone out of their way to like be in contact and keep him posted about what was happening back at the office and was just so dynamic in wanting to make sure they, they maintained that relationship that sure enough, uh, things, sorry. Welcome to Teams and Zoom in our age. And of course I thought I had turned that off. <laughs> I didn't turn off all the other gadgets. My phone was off, but the watch and the whatever. So anyways, back to the story. You know, do, five years ago, we would never, ever have been able to do what we're doing now. Because, I so I think it's phenomenal that we get buzzed and whatever. But that's so important part of our story. It really is. And, and, and quite frankly, you know, there are definitely states where they have far fewer people to, you mm -hmm. know, take care of business. Well, the power of Zoom allows them not to leave home and to still reach out to some of these employers that normally it could be an email or a form letter or something. It would not go in anywhere. More. Yeah. So and tell me about the last, what, last uh, memory you have. Oh, my final memory would just be, I got to go down to an event. It was a, I believe it was a yellow ribbon event, but it was on the midway. Oh, and just wow. being around the variety of people and all the other organizations that actually support little components of the mm -hmm. military, but they all have their niche. And I realized, wow, the ESGR has this bigger umbrella where we're really embracing a, a group of people that might not be served. And it was just such a great moment to realize, hey, I'm doing something really life altering for some families. That's fantastic. 
You are absolutely right, because that's exactly what we do. Um, I remember being on that Midway at that time. It was a very exciting event. I think also you've done a boss lift. I have. That was also, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. When you get to play with equipment and you're on, you know, boats and, and, and you're seeing different displays. We got to watch the dolphins who had been trained and, oh my gosh, it's mind blowing. And it just it reminds you, we have a lot of different components to our national security and <laughs> they've all got to kind of work together. So ah, Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate your taking the time in your busy life. And, and you, I under, cer certainly understand all of that with family and all the good things. And I really appreciate your time this afternoon. I think it's really fascinating and wonderful that we've had this 50 year anniversary of California ESGR. I certainly wish that it had been when Larry and I were way back during the Vietnam days. Thank you very much. It made much, a Chris. big difference. It's my pleasure. And, and here's to the next 50, because we will be around as long <laughs> as we're needed. <laughs> <laughs>